Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. The movie begins with the scene of a deep dugout sinkhole. We then see footage of explosions. It seems to be a mining site and everyone looks busy in manual labor. Among a group of people, we find a man named Shetman, accompanied by his son. Both the men are covered in dust and dirt, wearing clothes that suggest that they work in this place. The son discusses a co-worker who recently suffered a work-related accident. He asks his father to go easy on him since he is a good kid. Shutman seems to be the supervisor and he looks apologetic as he replies that he would have to let the kid go. Even if the boy has any personal problems, they should not interfere with his work. The son looks sad and pleads with Shutman to give him a second chance since he knows that the boy is good. The father sighs and responds by telling his son they'll discuss it later, then departs. The boy turns around and as he is walking, some strange creature pushes him aside, just behind the container. He rushes over to his son, only to find him dangling over a dark hole, just about to fall. He holds onto the boy's hand and tries to push him up but a strange entity attacks him, pushing him aside. He gets up to help again but finds his son gone. Suddenly, he gets attacked by a strange hand and falls near the opening. In despair, he hears his son's pleas for help fade into nothingness. In his fading consciousness, he seems to see his poor child's bloodied and injured face, struggling to hold on to life. Something sinister drags the poor boy into the depths of darkness. Fast forward to a year later, we meet a girl named Arian, who collects information about Shokum Hills from various articles. She is tirelessly looking at the maps and marking the surrounding areas of the hills with a serious look on her. It seems that although Arian has a passion for adventure, this is more personal than it seems. Suddenly she gets a voice message from a person named Darren. The man greets her in the message and tells her that he and the group are packing lightly and only bringing essential gear. After saying that they will meet her tomorrow, the voice message ends. It turns out, there is a group of four people planning a journey to Shokum Hills, with one of them being Darren, along with his friends. As the call ends, Arian takes a couple of pictures and marks them with names and information, starting with Darren. It becomes obvious then that she has done a background check on these and is carefully keeping track of the people that she would be traveling with to Shokum Hills. Our protagonist turns out to be a very careful and sharp woman. She takes out another picture and looks at it longingly. The picture seems to be a childhood photo of herself with her dad. The next day, Arian moves towards Shokum Hills with the team. The group includes a scientist named Darren and his team including Sean, Terry, and James. They ask Arian how many people have tried to find Shokum Hills before them, but the woman professionally curbs their curiosity by saying that she does not discuss her clients' private matters with others. In reality, Shokum Hills have disappeared from maps after 1970, and no one knows what has happened to the population there. The other team members chime in, Terry being particularly enthusiastic. He keeps moaning about how there are no maps that document that place, and the road that they are going on currently is also nameless. He keeps saying that they are going nowhere. Jamie and Terry get into a lighthearted argument where Jamie blames him about his questionable attitude towards their guy. He says that his friend is guessing the professionalism of Arian. Terry starts and says that he merely wants to help. Then, as if vouching for his words, he asks Arian if there is anything that he can do to assist her. The woman sassily shuts him up by retorting that maybe he could just shut up. As they move forward, Arian makes a pit stop at a shop to stock up on supplies. She descends the car and asks them to stay there while she comes back. The group also exits the car to take a breath of fresh air and to exercise their stiff muscles after the long car ride. Darren goes near the second seat window to ask a rather gloomy Sean if he is alright. The man looked very quiet the entire ride. Sean nods his head and we see him tightly clutching a black bead with a cross on it. Arian, on the other hand, enters the shop and sees strange stuff in bottles. The shop looks dark and is lit by lamps that give the illusion of candle light. She approaches the owner who looks engrossed in the book Paradise Lost, an epic poem in blank verse by the 17th century English poet John Milton. It is cool how the book's title seems to foreshadow the lives of everyone here in this almost lost location. She buys water and some car coolant. Afterwards, Arian inquires about the route to Shokum Hills. She says how she has been following the river yet there seems to be no sign of the place they are headed to. As soon as the shop owner hears the name Shokum Hills, he stops. The other person, accompanying the shop owner also looks a little wary for a moment. The man feigns ignorance and shakes his head in denial. He says that he has never heard of the place. However, when Arian insists, the man advises her to go back the way she came and she should be fine. His tone carries a hint of warning, as if the place that Arian wants to go to is not safe for her. Arian leaves the shop after listening to the owner, but little does she know that the owner is radioing someone, alerting them about trouble ahead. He probably means these people who have come looking for trouble. Arian comes back to the car and when she is asked about the location, she lies to them by saying that they are close. It becomes quite apparent at this point that she is not only just a mere guide after all. She must have some ulterior motives. As the journey resumes, Sean voices his concern all of a sudden. He says that they shouldn't be here, they should go back. He and Darren talk about something that according to Sean, isn't here, probably their scientist stuff. All of a sudden, a car starts trailing them. As they progress, the car's speed decreases, and Arian becomes suspicious that they're being followed. She takes a detour and eventually reaches a location where it becomes evident that the car is indeed tailing them. She speeds up the car and everyone inside freaks out. 
They keep telling her to slow down but she doesn't listen and at a certain point, sees the car behind them slow down. They curve into a side road and finally see the car following them, passing by. As it leaves, Arian somehow realizes that they wanted to throw them off the trail. She consequently comes to a conclusion. That the point where the car slowed down is the spot that they need to go back to, because it is that place where the other car wanted them to get past. As for how she came up with such a detailed analysis of the situation, and its solution on the spot, remains a mystery. Perhaps she has spent so many years traveling such places that her mind is automatically wired to detect such stuff. Or maybe she has a particularly high IQ. They reverse the car and retrace their steps. Arian asks them to look out for any side tracks or opening. As they investigate further, they stumble upon electric fences situated in the midst of the forest. They approach the fence and our scientist buddy here almost reaches out to open the gate, and roasts himself to oblivion. Thankfully Arian stops him on time and reminds him that they are Electra's fences. Sean remains skeptical. He expresses concern about why anyone would place fences in the middle of a forest. They clearly want to keep them out. Yet Darren and the rest of the group brushes off his worries and proceeds to think about how to cross the fence. The ever-resourceful Arian takes a rope out of her bag and makes a way to cross the fence. They all follow her lead and successfully enter the property, breaking through the fence. They stumble upon the deserted Shokum Hills mine. They walk forward, collecting samples as they go. Before nightfall, they arrive at a nice place to stay, setting up camp there. Near a serene lake, they engage in a discussion about Shokum Hills. During this conversation, they all share their theories about the place and how it must have vanished. Darren shares a theory. There might have been a sinkhole in Shokum Hills, and perhaps a toxic gas emanated from it, leading to the area's destruction. It becomes apparent that none of them truly knows what transpired in Shokum Hills. However, Darren's friend isn't convinced by the sinkhole explanation. He brings up a similar incident in Russia, where a massive sinkhole in Siberia, about a mile deep, produced eerie sounds when a microphone was dropped into it. The sounds echoed like people screaming or shouting. He suggests that the United States may have decided to create a similar enormous hole in Shokum Hills after observing Russia's action. Darren, on the other hand, dismisses this idea as pointless, leading to a heated argument about science and religion. The same old debate about reasoning and blind faith. Sean persists in trying to convince him that a natural disaster might not be the real cause of Shokum Hill's destruction and that there's more to the story that remains unknown. Darren remains reluctant to entertain his friend's alternative perspective. He gets up to leave, feeling annoyed. He can't seem to come around the fact that his friend, despite being in a scientist crew, is such a myth-believing person. Meanwhile, on the other side of the forest, three individuals arrive a girl named Shelby and her two companion. Their mission is to mend a damaged section of the fence that an animal had broken through. At first, they get a little worried and wonder if it could be a human, but one among them, the shop owner from earlier, bends down and inspects the wire. After inspecting for a while, he comes to a conclusion that it is not cut, but rather pulled, and they muse if it could be the work of an animal. All of them look terrified and on edge, as if some creature would jump out of the dark and drink them. One of them, named Kane, takes a flashlight and goes around the area to inspect. Kane is trembling as he searches. All of a sudden, he gets a call and mentions that he would get in touch, should he get any leads. After cutting the call, he keeps looking around and comes across the broken fence that has fallen over a sinkhole. The fence has a small hole in it. He zooms closer and hears a strange noise. Curious. He lowers his ear to the hole and tries to hear the sounds more clearly. As the saying goes, curiosity killed the cat. The poor man gets attacked by some strange creature that slithers out from the hole and passes away on the spot. Back at the camp, we see James curiously picking up a knife. Arian sees him and turns aggressive all of a sudden. Turns out it's a very precious knife for her. She takes it from his grasp and securely puts it away inside her back. Meanwhile, Terry approaches Darren and they have a bonding time where Darren talks about how one of his colleagues suggested Arian to him for the trip. Back at the fence. As they work on the wire, Shutman arrives to observe the situation. He asks about Arian and her group. It seems that they are yet to be aware of them trespassing the area. The group tells Shutman that they scared them, thus they would probably be gone. Shutman on the other hand is still wary. He orders them, exclaiming that he wants them gone for good and then goes away. The following day, Arian and her team continue their journey. As they move around the forest, they come across strange soundproofing foams usually used in the filming studio. Darren wonders what kind of sounds were they trying to stifle with these foams in this vast forest. Moving forwards, they stumble upon the massive sinkhole of Shokum Hills. Before they could investigate further, the same car that was following them the other day arrived. They all immediately hide. After making sure that no one is following, they leave the sinkhole behind and keep moving forward. Finally, after a while of walking forward, they emerge into a small abandoned place. It seems like an old abandoned valley. The rust shows that it had been empty for quite some time now. Excited, adrenaline overflowing, the group hurries in. They see a house that looks like a shop or something and enter it. The place is strangely overflowing with fog inside. As they observe everything around, they also document it with their cameras. Arian sees a door inside the shop and opens it. On the opposite side, they find the very mine they came looking for. The place, abandoned years ago. The very infamous Shokum Hills, covered in sinkholes. The area is filled with smoke that emanates from these strange fence-covered holes. They approach the largest one and see that numerous electric fences surround it. 
They decide to remove the fences and place a scanner and camera inside the sinkhole. As Terry examines the it, he suddenly hears a loud noise through his headphones. Startled, he quickly removes them, allowing everyone to hear the mysterious sound. Everyone keenly listens to the strange beastly noises and wonders what might be making those. In the process, poor Terry's leg accidentally gets entangled in the camera's rope. Out of nowhere, someone or something pulls him into the sinkhole. Everyone rushes towards the sinkhole but to no avail. Before they can help, a bloody Terry gets wrenched away into the darkest corner with his tearful echoes for help. Worried, Arian and Jame descend into the sinkhole to rescue their missing companion. They hear beastly growls coming from all around. Despite an extensive search, they can't locate him. Back at the surface, a stranger arrives and is clearly upset at the sight of an open sinkhole. He pulls out a gun and issues a stern warning for them to stay away from the hole. Darren and Sean make an attempt to reason with him, explaining that their team members are trapped inside but the man remains steadfast. He even goes so far as to sever one of the ropes in his attempts to seal the sinkhole shut. Desperate, Sean hits him hard with a rock, effectively causing him to lose consciousness. Back down in the hole, Arian, noticing the severed rope, becomes suspicious and decides to ascend with Jame to assess the situation above ground. Once outside the sinkhole, they see the stranger and swiftly leave the area, taking the stranger's car and leaving him behind. Sean is furious and pins the blame on Darren, insisting that this entire predicament is a result of Darren's fanatical pursuit of strange expeditions. A heated argument ensues and Sean questions the identity of the company that is funding this fool's errand. Before he can answer, the car becomes stuck in a ditch. Arian suggests they continue on foot, stressing the urgency of reaching the fence before evening sets in. Back at the mine yard, the stranger regains consciousness and finds that it's almost nighttime. He gets up and finds the car gone. The man hurriedly calls back to his station and informs his team about the situation. Right after, a strange creature attacks the poor man and drags him away. On the other side, the group proceeds with caution. Alarm sounds blare in the background and dark light of the night casts an eerie shadow over their path. They continue cautiously. Their senses heighten. All of a sudden, a creature's haunting cry pierces the darkness. Terrified, they decide to extinguish their flashlights and use the night vision for fear of being detected. While they slowly creep forward, out of nowhere, the creature launches an attack, seizing Sean. In a heart-pounding escape, Arian, Darren, and Jame manage to break free. Their fortune takes a turn as they stumble upon a truck, offering a glimmer of hope amidst the encroaching darkness. Poor Sean, however, could not get away. The truck arrives at Shutman's base with the three remaining survivors. They follow the escort into a room and the woman orders them to quietly sit there. Arians looks around the room and sees papers containing strange creature pictures stuck to the wall. There is also a frame of Derek, Shutman's son. Moments later, Shutman arrives at the room. Shelby tells him about Kane and Dale, the person whose car the group stole. Hearing his name, Darren remembers that he was a co-founder of the mining company which hints at his deep connection to the Shokum Hills. When he questions the old man, he replies by saying that it was all in the past and now he is just a person who merely guards the area. When Darren asks, the old man replies that he protects people like him. Arian, intrigued by the mysteries surrounding Shokum Hills, seeks clarification from Shutman. Her inquiry reflects her growing curiosity and the desire to unravel the truth behind the unsettling circumstances they find themselves in. Shutman acknowledges that perceptions of the place vary widely among different people. Some view it as a sinister hellhole, while others see it as purgatory. Before the explanation can continue, Shelby gets a radio message and they hear that the monsters have spread around the area. Shelby, keen on finding the open sinkhole mentioned by Arian, aggressively seeks information on its whereabouts from Darren. Shutman tells them to quickly go and seal the sinkhole before it is too late. Everyone leaves the room except Shutman. Outside, united by this shared goal, they opt to depart from the base and assemble a team to tackle the unfolding mystery. As they set out, Shelby's companion communicates via walkie-talkie, warning that the creatures are present all around and they should refrain from moving further. In a brave act, Elroy sacrifices it to divert the creature's attention, allowing the group to hide in a house. Inside the house, Shelby tells them valuable information about the creatures. She explains that these creatures are drawn to noise and possess strange tentacles that can paralyze people through touch. So whatever happens, they should never let these creatures catch them. As she speaks, the creatures launch an attack, forcing the group to flee into the next room's underground tunnel for escape. Midway through the tunnel, Shelby decides to separate from the group to serve as a distraction for the creatures. Arian, Darren, and Jane press on, but it doesn't take long before they once again encounter the menacing creatures. In a desperate attempt to fend them off, Jame tries to use a grenade, but one of the creatures intercepts and hurls the grenade back at him. The explosion leaves the poor man injured and paralyzed, and the creature carries him away. Now only Arian and Darren remain, the last survivors. Overwhelmed by the loss of their companions, Darren sinks to the ground, burdened with guilt, and confesses to Arian that a private company had wanted control of the Shokum Hills mine, and they were lured by the promise of a substantial reward. In essence, he had come here for the sake of money, so much for being the proud warrior of science. Despite the grim situation, Arian continues alone, but not before making a promise to Darren that she will return to rescue him. The scene shifts to Shutman, who stands near the fence with his team. On the opposite side is the group of beasts attempting to breach it. 
As soon as the fence comes apart, Shetman orders his team to open fire on the creatures. The scene shifts back to Arian, who is still on the move, desperately trying to evade the creatures. She comes out of the tunnel and hides when she hears their ominous sounds, but eventually cautiously emerges, thinking they have left. Suddenly, the creature ambushes her, taking her captive. Sometimes later, Arian regains consciousness on a strange boat, unsure of her surroundings and what lies ahead. She is on the boat rowed by the creature and accompanied by the lifeless body of Shelby. The creature's appearance is terrifying, and it guides the boat to its destination. Upon seeing her, the monster strikes her unconscious again. She comes to her senses sometimes later, and is reunited with Darren and Sean. She looks at the monstrous creature, the apparent queen, in fear and wonders what that thing might be. Sean somehow has an answer to that question. He explains that these rare creatures breed and colonize in a manner similar to ants. While he tells her this information, another creature arrives and seizes him, dragging him to their queen. In a horrifying turn of events, the queen devours him. Subsequently, Arian is taken to the queen, but before the queen can harm her, Arian manages to slip a grenade into its mouth. Seizing the opportunity, she escapes with Darren. As for the queen, she collapses. All it took was a teeny tiny grenade. They eventually reach the sinkhole, the one they had breached earlier. Using the rope, they begin to climb out. However, a swarm of creatures assembles, and one of them ascends the rope, threatening to attack. In an act of self Darren cuts the rope to save Arian. As the creatures devour the poor man below, Arian slowly drags herself above. As she nears the opening, the shop owner from earlier arrives and despite her pleas, is about to cut the rope. Just in the nick of time, Shutman arrives and pushes him away. He pulls Arian to safety. Several creatures emerge from the sinkhole but they are quickly dealt with. Shutman's team burns them to ashes and the hole is subsequently sealed shut. Concerned about Arian's team, the old man inquires about their whereabouts but soon hears the grim reality. Following the harrowing ordeal, Shutman takes Arian in his car and confides in her, revealing that the creatures took his son. He explains that he has been fighting the creatures ever since to avenge his son. Arian suggests that they should inform the world about these creatures, but Shutman, with a heavy heart, states that the world isn't prepared to confront the reality. Additionally, no one would be willing to believe them. Then, Shutman extends an offer to Arian, proposing that she stay and join him in the fight against the creatures. At first, she hesitates and steps out of the car. However, after a moment of contemplation, she reverses her course and re-enters the vehicle. The movie ends with Arian embracing Shutman's offer, choosing to stand beside him in their shared fight for survival. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.